Okay, here is the boundary conditions video. So in the last video we talked about um, the drawdown curve and interpreting that. And we also talked about steady state versus transient state. So we're going to be looking at the drawdown curve in further detail to assess boundary conditions. Now boundary conditions are some condition that we reach in the aquifer that changes our drawdown curve, that changes our, our our, the amount of water we're receiving to our well based on different boundaries in the aquifer. So it could be an impermeable boundary, it could be a recharge boundary, but we'll get into that now. So as I said, we can tell a lot about our aquifer based on our drawdown curve here. So let's go start the example again. So T0, we're at zero feet of drawdown. T1, we're at two. T3, or sorry, T10, we're at maybe two and a half. We'll say a three. Let me redo that. T100, three and a half. Um, and let's say that's what our curve looks like 100 minutes into our test. Okay? So we'll kind of draw that out. Let's say at 1,000 minutes into our test, we get some very increased drawdown. Let's say we, we get drawdown, we see drawdown of six feet. And then our curve looks like that. Well, that doesn't make sense based on what we were just talking about, right? Because we're saying as we reach further and further out into the aquifer, we're accessing more and more water. We're accessing more and more aquifer material. So that's why we get that flattening of the curve. Yeah? If we see this drastically increased drawdown at some point in our test, that means we've reached out into the aquifer at to some point where we've hit a boundary. Right? We've hit a boundary like something, and what we call it an impermeable boundary, where water is no longer coming through at the rate it was before. So let's draw that. What does that look like? So maybe, let me, let me start this over actually. So, <clears throat> so that's what our curve, that's not right. So that's what our curve looks like a thousand minutes into the test. We get this drastically increased drawdown. And so let's say we've reaching out at the aquifer and right here is T1 and then right here is T10. So say at T100 we reach there and then T1000, let's say we hit um, an impermeable boundary. So let's say it's like a fault, like a geologic fault in our formation there or something of that nature. Maybe. Um, maybe not a fault, but a, a different geologic unit. So let's say, you know, over here was sand and gravel, and then out here is um, granite. So let's say we're in a basin, right? That's a pretty typical setting. Let's say we're in, in a, an alluvial basin, and then everything in here is sand and gravel, but right here we've reached maybe um, some sort of metamorphic, some really impermeable, um, maybe some quartzite or something, or or, or granite, what, what have you, right? So quartzite is very impermeable when you compare it to sandstone or, or sand and gravel. So once we've reached, once our radius of influence reaches that impermeable boundary, we've hit the limit kind of of our aquifer setting, right? Our glass has stopped. Um, we've got this sort of bathtub effect going on. I like to think of it as like a bathtub, right? So we've hit we've hit the wall of the bathtub. Think of it like that. And let's say there's a, a boundary over here too on the other side. Let me draw that really quick. So we've hit the walls of our bathtub. So there's no further out we can go into the aquifer. Our aquifer extent has been reached. All we have left is impermeable bedrock, right? And so now we're gonna start draining out this this system. We're going to start draining out the sand and gravel. Does that make sense? We've reached the limits of our aquifer, of our sand and gravel. Oops. And now all we have left is what's left, uh, is the water left in our bathtub. So the red is our bathtub, and now we're just going to be draining out our bathtub, which is why you see this increased, drastically increased drawdown. Okay? So that's what we call a boundary condition. As our, and let me, reiterate this one time, and I feel like I'm beating the horse to death, um, but that's kind of my style, if you haven't noticed yet. 
Um, anyway, as our test goes out, as our radius of influence expands into the aquifer, we reach some condition, we reach some impermeable boundary, maybe a, a different uh, lithology, like a, an impermeable rock, or relatively impermeable rock, like a, a, a granite or a quartzite, and we have no further extent to go. There's no more aquifer material to draw on, right? There's no more water to be had for our, our pump, for our, for our well. So that's why we see that increased drawdown, okay? That's what we call a boundary condition. Now, let me erase all this. And let me see. Now we can have the opposite take place as well. So let's say, and it may, may not make sense to you right now, but let me draw this out. So let's say at T0, we're at 0. At T2, we're at, or sorry, T1, we're at 2 feet. T10, we're at 3 feet. T100, we're at 4 feet. And then at T1000, we see 2 feet. So now our drawdown curve looks like this, right? So we were at, so we, so let's see, there's two feet, T1, there's 10 feet, T2, and let me tr change colors to make this more illustrative. So T0, T1, two feet, T10, three feet, um, and then T100, four feet. So we're going down you know, as we go further into our test. And then all of a sudden, the drawdown rebounds, and we're back at two feet, right? Our drawdown decreased, which is not what we expect. But this is another example of a boundary condition. And typically, you won't see this sort of rebound. This is pretty drastic, but I'm just saying, I'm just doing this as an example. You'll see maybe a slight rebound or a slight... Um, slight upward slope. But what would this say to you? As we've gone further out into the aquifer, we have our drawdown has decreased, right? We've we don't expect that. And what would cause that? Well if you think about it, it's kind of the opposite of our last example, right? In our last example we reached out and hit a wall. In this example, we reach out and hit a recharge source. So let's say we've reached out and we hit the boundaries of a river, okay? Let's say at some point out in our, let me redraw that, maybe to make it a little more explicit. So let's say further out beyond the, the conceptual model of our little uh, drawing here, there's a river that reaches through this confining unit and is um, a recharge source for our aquifer. So as our, and let me draw this out. There's our river. So as our test influence, as our radius of influence from our test expands out uh, radially, we end up pulling from this river. So now we have a new source to our well. We're not just accessing the water that's in here in the aquifer. That's terrible. Let me read all that. We're not just accessing. <laughs> um, we're not just accessing the water in the aquifer here. Now we have an additional source, right? We have a river contributing water to our system, okay? We've reached out to our boundary, to a boundary, which is a recharge boundary. So it's the opposite of our impermeable boundary. We've reached a recharge source. Therefore, we have a larger volume of water to draw on. Therefore, we see reduced drawdown. And that's why our curve does that. So that's what we call, those are what we call boundary conditions. And the basic gist, again, is that as the, the test expands, as a radius of influence expands throughout the formation, we reach some boundary that's either a recharge source or an impermeable boundary that blocks the flow of water to our well, okay? And we can see that in the drawdown curve. And that's pretty cool, I think, um, that you can actually look at, at these data and see what's happening in the subsurface, you know? That's kind of a cool thing. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Um, so the last two videos we talked about the drawdown curve, we've talked about steady state versus transient state, and now we've talked about boundary conditions. The next step 
in the video series, we'll probably be, probably be looking at um, recovery data. So there's another analysis we can do from pumping test where we look at the recovery of the water level of the, the potentiometric surface after we stop our test. And then from there, we'll start digging into some of the analytical solutions to determine um, things like transitivity, storativity from these pumping test data using things like the tight solution, uh, Cooper Jacob, all that stuff. So that'll wrap it up for this one, and we'll see you in the next one.